Welcome to part seven of the complete guide to Sentinel-1 endpoint detection and response. And so today we're going to be talking about the application management, which is one of my favorite parts of the console. So let's go ahead and get into it. So what Sentinel-1 has done is essentially they've added a new section. They have kind of provided you with vulnerability management information. And so we've gone through all the previous tabs in other videos. And so now, or sections at least in other videos. And so now we're going to talk about the risk, the risk section. Now I'm right now in the technology interpreters tenant. And remember, this is a MSSP console, a managed security service provider console, which means that I'm able to add multiple companies in here based on this tree structure that we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up one level. And so that way I can see the vulnerabilities. And so imagine this could be a hundred or even a thousand different companies and I can see the vulnerabilities or the risk, which is what sensor one use here for all of those. And so just to get a bigger sample set, I want you to kind of see what this looks like. So essentially right now I can see that right now on Safari, 16.3 is what it's uh, saying is the application name and showing us the critical on the NVD or national vulnerability database. That's the score they assigned it a 9.8. Uh, you also, I think you have the number of CVE. So I'll click on that in just a second and we'll see the details on that. Let's see if I can scroll over just a little bit. Uh, I hate how you have to kind of scroll on this sometimes, but anyway, let's see if there are any columns right here. Remember, this is from previous exercises. Okay, that looks good. So that's all the information we get. Now we can also go up here and we can filter uh, based on the, the type of vendor. So Microsoft, Apple. So this is actually really helpful because say, for instance, if we were looking for Zoom vulnerabilities, we can just use our sort or our filter right here to go right directly to it. But we can also go into a direct search by application name. CVID, vendor, endpoint name, and the endpoint UUID, which is a unique identifier that's assigned to Sentinel-1 endpoints. Uh, in addition to that, we can search by the highest severity score. Criticals are 9 to 10. So this gives you the range, which I, I love kind of like using filters and stuff like that to kind of get the, what the metrics really mean. So high is 7 to 8.9. 4.0 to 6.9 is medium. 0.1 to 3.9 is low, and then you have false positive. And then you can sort by the highest NVD database score, National Vulnerability Database score. So I can take that and I can say, okay, I want it to be anything that's like an eight, nine. And so it'll filter when I apply that. Not gonna apply that just yet, okay? And the application detection date, or that basically coincides with the columns that we have here. So right there, say application detection date. And so if I want to filter down to a specific date, I can do that. And then days from detection, which is going to be this additional column right here. So it says 164 days from detection and I can actually take it and I can filter this up to, it looks like it only gives you 28 for those. Okay. So anyway, that kind of covers the filter, but let's go ahead and let's dig into it. And also just want to talk about what's on the menu right quick. This scan now. So once I, once you put a device into Sentinel-1 or, or basically install a Sentinel-1 agent, uh, this feature will go ahead and scan, but you can see it scanned on August the 9th, and next time it's going to scan on the 16th. If I want to initiate a scan right now, I can go ahead and press the Scan Now button, and that will start a scan. Now, keep in mind uh, what application I'm on the page with. So I'm on the main page, so essentially, since I didn't select that particular endpoint, I initiated, in theory, a scan on every application <laughs> or every device that's here. So be mindful that when you're doing things at the top level of your console, actions you take may, you may basically be carried out on a significant number of machines. But anyway, I haven't tested this to kind of confirm all the details that that's what's happening. But anyway, just something to be mindful of. I probably would filter down to the tenant and the device I was looking for if I was going to do a manual scan, you know, to be more strategic. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the Safari. And what it does is see, it takes me here and it kind of gives me like kind of the heads up display. I really like that. And it gives me the endpoints that are affected by which this is, I think is, uh, is this a Mac OS device? Yes. So this is a Mac OS device that basically I should have known that from Safari, right? <laughs> so, but anyway, and then I can click here and it shows me the list of CVEs and it shows that, you know, where the critical is highs. And so it gives a CVSS score. And then I can go here and over to the right, I can go ahead and I can click on a minor attack framework and it takes me to the CVE site here, which gives me additional information. Now, one of the things that will be nice if they integrate this, like, you know, a lot of the other products that spec like that really specialize in, the, in this, they actually include information on how to remediate this or where to go, where to download the patch and stuff like that. So that's why you pay for a, a lot of those additional tools that just specialize in vulnerability management. But this is a good value add, to be honest, just to start, because you can literally do purchase this product 
and do vulnerability management directly from it. So if I look at the CVE, it takes me here. It's just the issues was addressed and improves. The, the issue was addressed with improved state management. The issues are fixed in Mac OS Ventura 13.3. Safari 16.4 iOS. So it gives all the details and stuff like that. And so essentially what you can do is this is part of vulnerability management is you can kind of you kind of read the tea leaves here and tell you what you need to do. But essentially what I would do is uh, based on this one, I'm going to click on that first. Now that said MITRE. OK, and that took me straight to the CVE dot org instead of um, not what I was expecting. So and this takes to the NVD, which is NIST, right? NIST vulnerability database. Same thing gives you some information here. So issue was addressed with improved state management issue was fixed in. So same information roughly. And so you kind of go through these and you kind of use this to figure out exactly what your remediation steps are. Um, in addition to that, uh, I think that pretty much covers it. So we can look at a few more just so you can see how they look, how they look in here. But I need to go back. So right now I'm on the Safari one. So if I click back there, that takes me back to my menu. Look at this Python launcher right here. Let's see if that has anything significant. Let's go ahead so I can see what machine this is on. This is actually a Windows 11 machine. I can look at the CVEs for that. And then of course the same thing, critical, high, medium, we can go straight to MITRE, uh, which is not MITRE, we can go straight to the CVE or CVE.org. And it tells us information. But once again, this is really, really good. So let's look at some of these other fields. Like if I go to the inventory, what's nice about this, it gives me an inventory pretty much at this level of the tenant of all the apps that it's in. And so let's test that if I go up a level, right? So let's click here. Let's like basically navigate into technology interpreters only. So in theory, I should see this list be reduced. Uh, uh, let's see, I have a count of 52 right here in inventory. All right, you see right here on the top right-hand side. So if I go up a level, let's see if that number changes, 347. Okay, so it does. So as I, as I suspected, so if you initiate a scan or anything like that at a top higher level, then essentially you will um, end up um, scanning a significant number of machines, which could potentially cause issues. Most likely it won't. This seems to be a, what I call a low and slow scan. But anyway, this is the inventory of the applications. And so you're able to kind of click on these applications and once again, this one does a little bit different. It takes you to the endpoint and then you can actually click on the endpoint and within the endpoint, you'll be able to see. And this is what I showed on the endpoint or the Sentinels tab before. So you have seen this information if you have viewed the entire series, which I hope that you are for viewing them in order. All right. And so that's pretty much not a, not a lot that I know as far as the inventory tab. That's uh, that I do in addition to that. And then finally, on the policy tab, what you can do is you can check it to do an extensive vulnerability scan. And so basically it improves the CV assessment accuracy, which basically to me, it just increases the fidelity of the data. But that is all I have, man. I mean, like it's been so long, every video has been more than, well, I take that back, we can change policy. So like if we need, so a lot of these policies inherit from the higher level. And so you have to break the inheritance, which means that you, everything like you, it's basically there's a hierarchy in the console. And so everything that they assign at the high level propagates down. And so we can break that at this level to only address or only assign the policies that we want to assign. But anyway, I think that is it. We've covered the filter and sorting. So I will see you up next. We're going to get to the activity log, which I love. Activity log is good. Good stuff, Sentinel One. So anyway, if you have not done so, this is a great time. Please drop a like on the video. It helps me. It helps the algorithm, helps me to grow, helps me to reach more people and tell them the truth and not just send people to boot camps all the time. And then also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I would love to see you on the next video, but go back and I hope these videos are helpful. So please leave me some feedback and content, uh, feedback on the content so I can know how I can get better. Thanks again.